Okay, here's the expanded decision tree for the new situation. Notice that at the very beginning of our decision here, we need to decide whether we're going to conduct this study that costs $10,000 or not. If we don't conduct the study, then we go back to our old decision tree from two videos ago. Recall that on that old decision tree, I can't put it here because I don't have enough space, but on that old decision tree we had um, small, large, do nothing, and favorable, unfavorable, and we decided at that point to go with the small because it had the highest expected monetary value of $40,000. Okay, so that's what we do if we don't conduct a study. If you do conduct a study, now again, you got to recall that this is like a timeline here. The first thing that happens is the consultants then give us their decision. Now, is that decision on their part, is that a decision known for us, or is that a state of nature? Well, for us, it's a state of nature, because we don't decide, they do. So, we put a state of nature note there, and the probability is either positive or uh, negative. The, uh, the outcome is either positive or a negative result. Remember that positive is thumbs up, negative is th thumbs down. Then, if we get a positive result, then we have to make another decision. That's when we decide large, small, or do nothing. If we go with the large, well, then we get the actual result, favorable or unfavorable. If we go with the small, we get the state of nature, favorable or unfavorable. If we do nothing, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to break that down just to save space. Likewise, if we get a thumbs down, a negative result from the consultants, then we have our same three decisions. We can go with the large, we can go with the small, or we can do nothing. And then we get our actual result of the market, favorable market, unfavorable market, favorable or unfavorable. Okay, uh, so that's pretty much the complete tree. We just need to put the payoffs on there and the probabilities. Let's start with the payoffs. Recall that this study costs $10,000. So if we built a large one and it was favorable, our original profit was $200,000, but now we have to take off the cost of the study. So it drops to $190,000. And recall, if it was unfavorable, we lost $180,000, but now it's another 10 on top of it, the cost of the study, so it's minus 190. You have a choice at this point. You can either put the cost of the study in there, the payoffs, or you can leave it out and just go with the originals and then think about it later. But for this first example, I went ahead and put the cost of the study in there. Because recall that if we build a small one and it's favorable, we earn 100,000 minus 10 is 90. If we uh, build a small one, we lose 20,000 and an additional uh, 30. And if we do nothing, well, before it was zero, but now we've paid for the study 10,000. Okay, notice that these paths here then can be copied down here. These are exactly the same for the same reasons. On our previous video, then, we went through the Bayes theorem. And recall, I said that we needed favorable given positive to go on our tree. And what the consultants had provided us was positive given favorable. And that's just wrong. I mean, that's, that's exactly opposite of what we needed. We needed favorable given positive, which we calculated to be 78% from the base table. Unfavorable given positive was 22%, again, from the base table. These are exactly the same as these here, for the same reasons. We're still out of the positive uh, node. And then on the negative, uh, favorable given negative was 27%, unfavorable given negative was 73%, and copied down here, 27, 73, same thing. And then notice the prob probability of the positive result, we calculated to be 45%, probability of the negative result was 55%. And again, that was from the Bayes table as well, when we summed the two joint probabilities together. Of course, these have to sum to one. The final step in the decision tree, then, is to roll it back. Roll back the tree. And remember what we said, when you roll it back, you multiply probabilities times payoffs. And you always start at the end. So in this tree, for every state of nature node, we're going to roll it back. So let's start here. 78% times 190 plus 22% times minus 190 gives us 106,400. Likewise here, at this note, 78% times 90 plus 22% times minus 30 
gives us 63.5, and then, well, that's just minus 10. So, if we're sitting at this decision node, let's say that we've conducted the study, we've got a positive result, and we've got to make our decision, we're going to go with large, because that's the highest expected monetary value of these three. So to indicate this on our tree, that we're going to go with large, we're going to cross out with these lines here on the small and do-nothing branches. So if we're sitting here, we go in that direction. Okay, likewise, down here, we do the same thing. Roll it back for every state of nature node. 27% times 190 plus 73% times minus 190 gives us minus 87.4. Likewise here, 27% times 90 plus 73% times minus 30 gives us 2.4, dollars $2,400. And of course, that's minus 10. So if we're sitting here, if we've conducted the study and we get a negative result, and we're sitting right there at this node, we're going to go ahead and build a small one anyway because that has a higher expected monetary value compared to either of these. Okay? Now, we have to roll it back one more time because we've got another state of nature node. We said that at every state of nature node we roll it back. Well, what do we multiply now? Well, we take the 45% times the 106.4 plus 55% times the 2400 because the other ones are scratched out. So this times this plus this times this gives us an expected monetary value of this branch of 49,200. 49,200. So, remember we've incorporated the cost of the study on these payoffs already. If we had not incorporated the cost of the study, this would be 59.2. But we've already incorporated it, so it's 49.2. And what we do now is compare this branch, the payoff here, conducting the study, to this branch here, the old tree, small, 40,000. So our expected monetary value, 49,200, is higher than the 40,000 40, down there. So, if, we, if we're making our decision, we would go ahead and conduct the study. So our decision strategy then is go ahead, conduct the study, pay the consultants $10,000, get the results, and if the results are positive, then go ahead and build a large one. If the results of the study are negative, then we're going to head, go ahead and build a small one. What's that study worth to us? Well, if it were free, we're going to see in the next video that uh, it would be 19,200, but it's not free, so uh, the extra profit that we get from this is 9,200 above this one. Now, what if this situation had happened? What if uh, we got a positive result and the decision was to build a small one, or if we got a negative result, the decision was to build a, a small one? What's the value of that information? Well, it's nothing, because we were going to build a small one anyway without the consultants. So if the consultants don't change our behavior or our decision in the end, if we're going to build a small one anyway, no matter what they say, then we shouldn't conduct the study because it's not worth anything to us at all. On the next video, we'll calculate the expected value sample information and the efficiency of this information for this example.